Hey Jody, you're with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of building a small argon chamber for TIG welding small parts that can benefit from argon shielding front, back, all the way around. This is, this is where we add the special sauce. Let's get to it. All right, very quick review of part one. If you'll remember, we talked about using aluminum chill blocks like this for TIG welding stainless steel sheet metal and how it prevents distortion and also really improves the color by drawing the heat out of the part very quickly and it lets the uh, this number 12 ferric cup do its job really well and you come out with a, a stainless steel weld that's almost discoloration free if you do everything just right. Combination of the cup and the chill bars has a great effect. Alright, this is called a centered bronze air muffler. I, I pronounced it wrong and spelled it wrong in the last video so I'm trying to correct that. Very quickly here just using these little quick connect type fittings and some clear plastic tubing a little grill here and a piece of stainless steel mesh and the biggest reason for the mesh is this right here I'm going to use BB's for sort of a diffuser material as well as something to hold parts and I don't know that it's the best material It's just proving a concept here I think I'm going to try uh, polished stones and maybe even some get glass beads maybe some stainless steel balls or copper balls just proving the concept, not saying it's safe. It can definitely contaminate stainless steel parts. I don't know what else can happen, so proceed at your own risk if you if you take a notion to try this out. But I saw some really good possibilities here. The first thing off, I'm going to weld a little bead down the edge of this strip of titanium. Titanium will let us know if we've got argon or not covering, shielding the weld area. It really is very sensitive to discoloration if you got any air coming in at all. And it looks like so far so good. That's a perfectly silver bead, no discoloration at all. And that is with using about 25 CFH coming through the BB box as well as on the torch. So let's let's try a little butt joint here. I'm, I've got spacer plates to get it up off the BBs because it will melt BBs to the back of the weld. And in the case of titanium, I'm, I'm welding a couple little titanium strips here together. That's very bad to melt any steel at all in the titanium bead. It pretty much just makes a really, really glass-like brittle area. So that's why that's the reason for the spacer plates, getting it up away from the BBs, but not so far that it doesn't get good argon shielding to the back side. And again, got the Furic number 12 cup in there. And I have used some restrictor plates here. I, I got some uh, plexiglass and I'm just messing around with this. Makes sense to me if you restrict the flow a little bit and only have a, as large an opening as you need to weld something, then you'll have better results. So, just going to run a quick bead down this titanium here. And titanium is not that difficult to weld, but you do need really good gas shielding. We're going to do some titanium welding very soon in another video. That's the back side. That's about as good as it gets on, on purge. Now, this is, this is the kind of thing that I envision this little, this little apparatus being good for. This is a part that I had to do some repair welding on a while back, and these are some extras. And that slot is mismachined. So to fill that slot in, typically you might have some scaling and stuff on the back side, and then you either got to get in there with some kind of belt sander and, and clean it up, or you're going to have to weld over oxidation on the back side. Here the back side is nice and clean and shielded going to be very easy to go in there and, and melt that and add some rod while, while it gets shielded all the way around and nice shiny bead, no effort at all, no having to clean up between. Jobs like this are very common. When I, when I used to work for an airline, it was common to have a mechanic come in the weld shop once a week or so needing some special wrench to get in a really tight spot. So, you know, when you weld one side of something like this, a lot of times the other side gets scaly and gray and you have to clean it up. And this is just an easy way to weld one side and then the other side. And again, you have to be very careful not to melt BBs to the part. So I'm just, just kind of showing some possibilities here of what, what this would be good for. Things like uh, welding a, a stainless steel washer on a nut. And once again, these are, these are copper-coated steel BBs, so there's a risk of contaminating stainless steel. Just proving the concept here. I intend to get some copper balls or some stainless steel balls or maybe even some polished stones in which case I'll have to ground the part with some kind of other apparatus coming off the table. 
This is before I cut the plexiglass. I was just experimenting here with some HVAC tape, just kind of providing a little small area there, and it really did work well. You can see how silver that bead is, just welding the inside of a stainless steel washer and getting zero discoloration at all, and decided to just go ahead and fill it all the way. That's an awful lot of heat. Normally that would be discolored and oxidized outside the weld zone, and that's pretty silver. So that worked really well. Now, you don't have to fabricate a box in order to do this. So I'd like to throw out some ideas here. This is one idea of a really inexpensive way to do essentially the same thing. Start off with some soft copper tubing with holes in it. Make, put the holes on the back side. Add some diffuser material. In this case, it's just steel wool. And then something to to separate the steel wool from the part and then maybe something else to make sure BBs don't fall through. And then add the BBs and then a little plate on the top to hold the gas in uh, while you purge it. And again, this is this would really work a lot better probably with a, a piece of plexiglass with a, an opening in it or several pieces that you could move around and just, but, but this is Jonathan Lewis here, um, a friend of mine who is experimenting with this concept here and welding a bead on some titanium those other beads did not have gas shielding on them at all and there you see that BB is melted to the bead to the back side of the bead a little bit and that's a problem with titanium you wouldn't want that but the gas shielding is excellent now this is just a meatloaf pan or something like that from Walmart along with some copper tubing and some other items just to prove out you can, you know, if you, you want to try something like this, you don't have to go to the trouble of making a nice pretty box with, with threaded holes for ports and diffuser material and everything. This is just a down and dirty version, and I think it would work better with some type of a lid or restrictor plate on the top. But this design here actually worked very well, so, and not a lot invested, not a lot of time invested either. All right, well, that about wraps it up. I do want to say a, a thank you to a sponsor, Optrell, for providing this helmet. I've had a chance to get some time on this thing. I was doing some flux core welding a week or two ago and had the uh, Papper unit on there that supplies filtered air. And uh, with flux core, it was, it was a good clear arc, but I didn't really notice the benefits that I noticed when I was doing this light TIG welding here. And the reason is because this thing kind of follows you with your amperage and with TIG welding with a foot pedal that's when you really notice the, the benefits here so I could be romping down at 150 amps and I'll taper down to 10 amps and the lens gets lighter as I go and so it just lets you see some things that you <laughs> probably were missing out on and where I could see that would be a real benefit would be crack sensitive materials as you were cratering out tapering off of, of a weld terminating the arc you would notice that little small crack forming where it may be otherwise it might get by you. So um, I'm still going to put some more time on this thing and, and learn more of the ins and outs, but you know, it's got all the bells and whistles, sensitivity, delay, uh, and, and a whole lot more than that, especially that automatic variance where it follows the, the intensity of the arc gets darker or lighter as you go. So thanks Optrell for providing the helmet. Again, this is a E684 auto darkening from Op Optrell, and this one's got the the little uh, adapter here for the papper unit for the forced air and uh, that's pretty nice too if you're doing a lot of smoky stuff hey thanks for watching we'll see you next time